Welcome everyone in the next session of Intelligent Transportation System. My name is Dr. Asim. Uh, today we will try to understand that what kind of different transportation management system exist in the highways and the role of intelligent transportation system and how we can uh, categorize different uh, traffic detectors, OK? Or how we can commute or uh, compute or uh, analyze different data which we received from the uh, from those uh, uh, traffic detectors which are exist at the uh, intersection system. Okay, so there are four basic types of the uh, of the uh, element through which we usually uh, computerize or use uh, the data for the uh, analysis purpose. Uh, the first one is the communication. Okay, communication, and then we have the uh, traffic detectors and then we have uh, sensing technologies and then we have analysis okay, so those are the are the four basic fundamental parts uh, through which we usually analyze the received data from the different are traffic detectors in the site, which are already installed in the site. Right? Uh, today we will try to understand those five different models that how we can use the local detection, the section uh, oriented from uh, from from usually where we uh, detect that data and what is the floating core concept. And we will also try to understand the, the data fusion model as well. Okay. Hello. And I'm the witchy Wadan School Flow Station. Of the name, sir, wash me how are you? Hello. 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 OK, the first point is that what is the traffic or the data which we detect from the from the local detectors, OK? So intelligent transportation technology may vary uh, from place to place or from the area to area according to its requirement, OK? But what are the, the basic component we, which we use uh, to receive that specific data? So for example, we would like to navigate any car in like any of that specific block, so we need that which traffic signals uh, between which traffic signals this car is currently uh, floating or what is its due special coordinate and what kind of variable message signs uh, is uh, sending the information to that specific car and also do we have the automatic number plate recognition system if it's installed anywhere here at any intersection so so that we can identify uh, the uh, characteristic of that specific car uh, which is now currently moving in okay but again when we try to understand the detection of the local uh, from the local devices so we will mainly deal with the macroscopic and microscopic, OK? So this is the two type of the data which we will try to understand. So what is macroscopic, OK? Is which is quite clear from its name that where we, we are trying to uh, analyze or consider the aggregate behavior of the traffic flow. But while when we are trying to understand microscopic, so we are trying to understand uh, the parameters such as driver behavior, vehicle's location, okay, vehicle location, distance denoted with D or L, headways. What is the the uh, the kind of a pause time or the break time between two vehicle head and the tail? along with velocity, along with the acceleration. 
when we are trying to understand macroscopic so in the in the macroscopic we are mainly try to deal with the model q is equal to k into v okay what is q k is actually density v is velocity or which we call the mean speed as well which we determine it in the kilometer per hour while q is actually the flow okay so flow is equal to density into velocity but when we are trying to understand the the macroscopic so microscopic is a bit more in a detail because we are trying to go uh, inside that specific domain from where we are trying to understand the individual behavior such as what is the type of fecal okay what is the speed what is the color one two three and here we have four is the mass uh, where we are trying to understand the tire pressure uh, along with the load as well so like load divided by total unit area and uh, occupancy time denoted with tb okay and uh, how many number of uh, number palette or any other variable uh, attributes if we actually required okay so those are the different uh, points which we consider in the macro and the microscopic so now is those sessions have been already covered but again i will just go in a very quick way so that we can understand that what is the local detection and how we can receive the data from the inductive loop light barrier system infrared ultrasonic laser radius uh, video and the magnetic field okay but you can also uh, cover all those topics in a in a very simple words in my previous session or lecture as well okay so what is inductive loop inductive loop is actually working uh, so its working principle is the vehicle or the loop change its inductivity in a simple words okay so is you can see here this is type 1 and this is type 2 so its covered area is 2.5 meter and its covered uh, uh, total distance is 4 meter okay so this is the kind of a circuit through which we actually measure that specific car data so for the purpose to understand what is its length and what is its width okay so that we can identify it that either this data we are receiving is from the car from the truck or the truck with trailer or it's a heavy vehicle data so it's it's a very bigger advantage is okay so that its classification is always possible so we can classify it according to the different scenarios and situation and its cost is low OK, so classification. And cost cost is also low, so like it's uh, affordable and it's also not dependent on the environment. So it will give us data in any time if it's a snowy season, if it's a rainy. So uh, it does not have any uh, independency on the environmental factor. But if we are trying to understand its negative point, so it's expensive is a bit is a bit uh installation is a bit expensive and we might uh have the kind of a inaccuracy when we are trying to determine the speed so we can identify its length uh, its length and width of any moving object but when we are trying to understand the speed so like for example if uh, we install the two loops here loop one and loop two okay and we try to understand it, for example, if it's enter at 80 and left this part at 801. So can we identify uh, that specific object, that specific moving uh, object speed? If it's the total distance is 800 meter, so it might be 80 kilometer, but 
So according to the uh, practices application, we might receive the wrong data as well. The next part is the infrared detection. So it usually collect the data from the heat radiation in the infrared spectrum. Okay, And its uh, frequency is between uh, 1011 to 1104 hertz. Okay. So it's a passive IR detector system, that one, uh, which we also call the PIR, passive infrared detector, which usually measure the heat difference, OK? The heat difference between what? Between road, that road, and that moving object vehicle. OK, so it's a measurement of, of that specific area. And this is the example of passive, and then we have the active as well. So which emit radiation, OK? If you never uh, experience the uh, radiation uh, infrared, so the X-ray or the MRI system which use in the health sector is the, is uh, I believe is the most uh, kind of a understandable example. Okay? So if we are trying to understand its advantages, so it have the quite wide range. So it can uh, identify and give you the idea about the macroscopic and the microscopic different characteristic at a very large distance. And the next point is that it does not require any maintenance. So it's a free maintenance device. And uh, we can also create the air profile as well of any vehicle. We can also specify the height. And uh, of course, and it is not sensible uh, if we have the bed light or like, for example, uh, the, uh, the foggy situation or something like that, OK? Uh, but its inaccuracy is that it might give us a bit wrong data when we have snow or fog. And uh, sometimes the length which we received from the uh, from the from the passive uh, infrared detection, so it's sometimes not accurate, okay? So those are the only two its disadvantages. So what is the supersonic ultrasound? The supersonic ultrasound is working at the frequency of 16 to 35 gigahertz, which reflect and receive the different time intervals which measured from the vehicle profile, okay? Uh, so, so that we can uh, understand the profile of speed along with the length, okay? Speed along with moving object length, object length, okay? And those are the different parameters, so we can identify flow. We can also uh, identify the, the uh, different heat uh, intervals as well. We can also identify the vehicle as well, we, uh, means vehicle density. And uh, through indirect process, we can also identify the uh, interval time along with the uh, vehicle type, okay? If we are trying to understand its merits or uh, advantages, so its bigger advantage is that it generate exact or precise profile so that we can identify that is it, a, is it a car, is it a truck, is it a trailer, is it a LTV, is it a HTV, et cetera, okay? And uh, the uh, it's a bit not expensive as well, so it's economical. So we have also not required maintenance as well, which we call freeware device. But if we are trying to understand its negative object, so it's a bit more uh, kind of not maybe right in terms of the vehicle recognition system, because it will only work according to the to this stored value object. So if it's identify something else, it might give you some other data as well. And it's it have also a bit strong influence on the environment as well. 
So if it's a, a like snowy season, rainy season, so we might reduce the collection of the data as well. Uh, the next part is laser. So from that laser, uh, this is the signature of that specific laser uh, through which we can identify the different characteristic patterns. Uh, uh, directly uh, detect the flow, the total flow, and we can also identify the different profiles such as wave, such as uh, velocity as well. So laser beams uh, are the one through which reflect their time intervals and its frequency is up to 10 gigahertz. OK. So it have a bit higher performance is compared to other different uh, different type of a uh, examples which we already studied. And uh, if we are trying to understand that specific uh, that specific special uh, application, so this is uh, the called the laser beam laser beam system, which create the accurate and very precise profile because it is supported by those two lasers and it gives you the exact profile low meter of any passing object and uh, but that is only possible in the one lane per time okay but if we are trying to understand its advantages so it have different uh, advantages that like we can collect different data in a very short and precise time. It's only disadvantages that it's a bit expensive. OK, so it's expensive as compared to the other devices. Uh, light barrier are the one which are consist of the light sources and different sensors. As you can see here, we can, of course, identify the the uh, the overall flow behavior, but uh, indirectly we cannot detect any kind of a microscopic, uh, sorry, through direct method, but of course through uh, indirect method, we can identify the uh, the mild velocity, velocity, and of course the uh, different in, uh, intervals as well as well. Uh, it have the interruption of the light source within the sensor, and uh, it can also uh, consist of normal type of a light uh, of the of the visible light or the uh, infrared laser system. So it's mostly like function through directly reference and purification system. So this is the typical radar system. This one is with the straight antenna. This one is with the moving one. So it actually function on the through the Doppler effect. Maybe some of you are already aware of that terminology. So it have the relative movement which is detected between sent and received signal frequency. So which is between uh, like from one to 50 kilometer per hour. And uh, if we are trying to understand its uh, disadvantages, it, it only work at a very small angle, small angle application. at uh, the large angle, large angle wrong data, so like inaccurate data. And then we have the radio detection system as well, so which mainly work and recognize uh, on the basis of the uh, palette recognition system. OK, so it uh, it is mostly or mainly all the data is acquired from the flexible or the virtual detector positions, such as uh, system type, image, stream data. So it function on the complex algorithm. Uh, and uh, it's also sometime maybe the those technologies maybe function limitedly if we have the visibility issue as well. So like it have a bit less application if we have folk or smoke, or maybe if there are any kind of a dirt on the vehicle system. OK, so it is a different object such as a grayscale analysis, stereoscopy, optical flow and uh, image difference processing. We will try to understand them one by one. So what is background subtraction system? So this is the 
uh, is you can see here that we have the standing vehicle can be uh, detected. So we have the gray tomb barrier for the purpose that we can uh, hear. You can see here if we receive any kind of a false alarm, such as like accident or any help is required. So that can be minimized. OK, uh, through the uh, great on barrier and we can see if if uh, somewhere here we have any uh, real kind of a conflict or clash between any two vehicles. As we already mentioned, that uh, great own function is also used uh, to receive that data, but uh, that uh, due to, to that optical flow, because there is some kind of a water or maybe uh, kind of a fog or like smoke, uh, different water drops are, uh, are on the top of, of that device, single vehicle data. So as you can see here in the uh, step one, so we have the interval from one to five minutes. OK, and what kind of and which kind of data we can receive, such as the flow of any vehicles, flow of trucks, so which is again identify with K multiply V, K multiply V. But of course, in one place we have the flow of trucks, in another place we have the vehicles as well. And then we have the mean speed, and then we have the mean speed for the trucks as well. And then we have the smooth speed or the free flow. We will explain that term in the in the coming slide. And then we have the uh, standard deviation between different speed of the vehicle, and we can also identify the mean time as well. Okay. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we have the uh, aggregation flow, such as we already discussed about Q uh, flow of the vehicle. So like any number of vehicles, should be uh, divided by the unit time of one hour, so which is equal to 60 minutes divided by minute. OK, and if we would like to identify the different aggregation of speed, so we can use that through the uh, arithmetic means where M is actually the number of the vehicle detected in like that specific class, and uh, we can identify the number of uh, vehicles from like from like speed vehicle from number I to any N, OK? And then we have the velocity of any single vehicle. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we can also identify the standard mean uh, deviation as well of any platoon, OK? And then we, have, we can also uh, identify the smooth mean as well, OK? Which is equal to VG is equal to VI into alpha plus vg into i minus one into one minus alpha. So vi is actually uh, the the uh, speed of vehicle number i and uh, the vj into i minus one is actually the different mean value starting from the alpha from one two different time of intervals and uh, alpha is the factor which is used for the time for, for the different time in term, uh, interval from 1 to 0 0.1 second okay from 1 minute to 0.1 second okay and it's advantage of this specific system that we can detect different values such as height uh, and weight as well, and we can also identify and uh, implement different algorithms through which we can uh, identify the uh, the values such as like mean speed, um, standard deviation, and uh, and the smooth mean of the of the vehicles or any platoon as well. Uh, and then we have the falsif uh, falsifiability check. Okay. So basically, falsifiability is the portion of the two measured value which is formed and compared. So like, for example, this is detector. This is the system where it's identified, and this is the, the data receiving. So this is one is sender, and this is receiver, OK? So what we do here, we are trying to measure value between two different 
quotients like sender and like receiver with, of course, with the tolerance range as well, so that to correct that specific data and eliminate the error if it's measured. Okay? So during that falsifiability check, we have different kind of a uh, parameters such as locked detector, such as California path time, where we have the two basic function on time test or the off time test, and then we have the occupancy as well, and then we have of course PI check system uh, according to the German guidelines, and then we have the fuzzy clustering, and then fundamental diagram, and so on. And okay, in the last, and then what we do, we do the daily report of the of the all data received from the different sources. So what is locked? detector so lock detector is actually the mechanism through which we we receive the constant value of the speed v and flow okay and then we have the california system where we have the two uh, parameters on time or the off uh, offset time in the on time so we assume that the residence of the of the of the residence time of any vehicle on different loop is dependent on the speed okay so here we have the time dependent on the speed and then here in the offset time so we have the time difference between two vehicle is independent so here we have the independence okay? and then we have the fuzzy clustering uh, what is basically fuzzy clustering oh sorry uh, so this is the uh, occupancy dependability feasibility check so where we have the flow is q occupancy is b so the that is basically the part of flow divided by occupancy and then we have the fuzzy clustering fuzzy clustering is that how we can provide the different uh, intervals to the different data so that we can combine it in the in the uh, cluster form so that we can calculate data set so the higher degree of membership the higher pulsability detection we will have okay and then we have the fundamental diagram test so which purpose is to search for the data of the v and q flow uh, velocity and flow and then we have the replacement value, replacement value or uh, the one which which compare uh, the data between the receiving and and also to replace it if it's not correct. Okay, so we have the specific chart as well, the kind of fixed chart. And then we have the checking vehicle length. So checking vehicle length is only used to measure the the vehicle length lies inside the realistic boundary so of course we can detect any vehicle if it's between any two inductive loop and then we have uh, in the last we have the daily report uh, through which we usually provide the duration frequency of different errors reported from the from the different case studies and then we usually use the uh, aggregated error benchmark or the comparing benchmark. So if we found any kind of a uh, any kind of a mistake in that specific data, and then we usually use the uh, comparing benchmark uh, through which through the time variation curve or the measured data uh, over a fixed period. So for fixed period means for like single day, for like 24 hours. Okay. So we provide different time variation curves on the prototype. So this is the level of service. Which is used for to analyze the current traffic situation. So we have the four uh, level of services are uh, identified here, and that is identified on the on the on the parameters such as like vehicles. And then we have the local density as well, so which is identified with L. So as you can see here, one lane, two lane, three lane, and four lane. So what we will call free flow, dense flow, viscous flow, or the congestion. So in in a single lane, as you can see here, 
in a single lane, we will call the, the free flow when we have the speed is more than 80 km per hour. And in the uh, single lane, in the two lane, in the three lane, as well as in the four lane. And uh, that local density should not be less than 50. When we try to understand dense flow, so in the single lane, that should be 80. Uh, and uh, similarly, is like free flow and like dense flow. Okay? So almost they have the, the same situation, but only uh, the the local density is a bit change because we have a bit more density uh, between any two section. When we try to understand viscous flow, so viscous flow means that uh, the speed should not be uh, more than higher, but it should also not be less than 30. And when we try to understand congestion, so then we have the total speed is moving at the less than 30 kilometer per hour. Okay, so this is those are the the four different level of services which we identify as the level of service, and this is the the typical example according to the to the German guideline system mass. So now the data from local detection is almost finished. Now we will try to understand data from the section oriented. So. That specific section goal is to recognize vehicle at different cross section. So through this way, the travel time can be determined and different traffic condition can be better described, okay? such as travel time, travel speed, and so on. And uh, we also use different kind of a uh, procedure here as well, such as license plate recognition, which we call LPR. And then we have the image analysis. And then we have the RFID, so which we call radio frequency identification. And then we have the ISAR uh, analysis of vehicle signature or different inductive loops. And then uh, analysis of different re-identification of the Bluetooth IDs as well. Okay, So here you can see here, uh, this is the typical example of the Munich, Germany. Okay. Uh, this is the 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 kind of a moving car or the or the automatic number plate recognition system. Uh, we are trying to recognize this system through the through the different infrared cameras, as you can see here. While this uh, this car will cross any section, so we can identify that vehicle spot. You can see here, uh, we receive that data that where it was moving, what, how much total distance that specific car have covered, what is its total kind of a uh, distance traveled, and what, where that specific car was at like different location. So we can identify its data from like anywhere. As you can see here, so we, uh, when we filtered that data, from the uh, automatic number plate system. So we usually eliminate the outliers as well as you can see here. So though this is the data which is a bit outlier data. So we usually eliminate that part okay? for the for the easiness of the analysis. Uh, the next part is the inductive loop signal correlation system. It works under the five umbrellas. The first one is about the standardization. And then we have the pre-filter system, and then we have the comparing of the of the uh, different signature signature means profiles, and then we have filter, and then we display it is like that, and then display is connected with the different variable message signs. Okay, so detecting a single lane is usually enough to calculate the uh, the any kind of a uh, significant travel time. So whenever we detect different matrices, such as from the origin to the destination, so travel time can be used to rearrange the speed, such as uh, that speed at the different intersection, congested area, uh, and uh, we can also identify the traffic, different traffic signals as well, okay? Uh, the next part is about the floating car data. As you can see here, this is connected through the satellite and uh, that data is received from the GPS system along with the exact calculation of different 
geospatial location along with time, and then we send that data to any pri through private radio or any cellular network, and it is connected with the data collection point as well. So source of information or the or floating is the term which is used for the traffic stream technologies. So we usually uh, like use different kind of a data such as uh, GPS, of course, sensor, of course, uh, onboard sensor within vehicle. OK. Uh, cell phone as well. Map matching. Or even route searching. And then calculation of speeds as well. So what is the its advantages if we are trying to understand the the floating car data? So its advantages is uh, is that it have the very good positioning system and connectivity with the global positioning system, and we can transmit the all data to the taxi center or uh, or that specific center, and we can also reduce its cost while using different private mobile radio system. And we can also cover the high road or like main road network as well. OK, and we can receive the maximum data. It's just if it's, uh, it's disadvantages that it have the limited area coverage because might be not uh, every person have have that required uh, cell phone which you required or like needed for for the receiving of that data and uh, special uh, driving characteristic might be required in network, of course, as well. So we can compare different uh, profiles uh, from different local the analysis system as well. So now we have received data from like all those different sources. So that part is done and we have received data from like different uh, oriented section. We also now uh, know the uh, floating car as well. So like it is the the uh, like receiving of data. Now we have stored it. We have cluster it. And now we are going for the fusion. Fusion means analysis. OK, so we are trying to to uh, understand that data while using uh, different parameters, which is required for the macroscope as well as the microscopic analysis. As you can see here, we receive different uh, data. For example, for the fusion purpose, we can also uh, receive our own installed track as well, which we call the fleet of the vehicle for the congestion detection and truck system, which is used in the Germany. And we can also use different uh, cooperation of the mobile uh, manufacturer, for example, Apple, Huawei, um, Huawei and like Lenovo, etc. If you can build in chip in like those, uh, for example, uh, automobile companies, and they are connected with those, with like the type of a uh, cell phone companies as well. And we can also uh, receive most of the data from the TomTom -tom as well. Uh, so this is the kind of a uh, the the uh, floating car data from the personal navigation system or might be other sources as well. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, that data looks like that, that uh, we have kind of a completely jam situation here. And uh, from the data, we can also receive at which point where we have free flow, where we have dense flow, where we have mild flow or where we have the congestion. So the purpose of today lecture is that how we can identify that which route is under maximum density and where we have less speed. So this was the purpose of the today session. And of course, those slides are uh, are uh, are used and uh, some of our most of the slides are used from the from the Technical University of Munich from the uh, Professor Dr. Matthew Spangler.